So, we have talked about bending moment uh, in the last class. We can continue with that and switch over to other thing like shear force. So, it is basically uh, some component related to bending of beam. So, the same problem if we draw here again. So, we took a beam like that, put a load at some intermediate point phi, we got some reaction R B P A by L and at A it was R A P B divided by L. Now, one of the component we have defined as bending moment and uh, we wrote some expression for bending moment and we have seen that quantity is not fixed within the member, it is varying and that was function of x, we have tried to plot that. In that case, it was varying in a linear manner. Similarly, there is a quantity called shear force. Basically, this force, if we try to take any section, so it will give some shearing type of stress. So, if you take any point, any, any section in between, and that shear stress will be that that force divided by area more or less it is shear stress, and the total force is shear force. Now, here also, if we define the total beam segment into two regions, one A to this load point and load point to the B. So, x one part is it is A 0, another is x A. So, shear force sometimes we define in the form of V, it will be say R A. So, here there is no other force any section if you pick up the shear force is only R A. If you cross that load, so V will be your R A minus P or this R A will be your P B by L or here it is P B by L minus P, P B by L into P or if we write P it will be B minus L by L or you can write P into A by L because L minus B is basically A. Now, here there is one point quantity P B by L another quantity P A by L and they are back practically matching with R A and R B. P A by L is basically your uh, R B and P B by L equal to R A, but here it is a plus sign, it is a minus sign and the bending moment expressions what we have written earlier, it was positive in both the cases and we got a positive bending moment diagram. So, here I will first draw it, then we will try to define what is the what is the meaning of this plus minus. So, we have to define some sign convention based on that we have to draw the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram. So, here if we try to draw the shear force diagram, so if we draw a line, so this region is basically your R A or P B by L and here it is negative, this part will be P A by L. So, this is a positive part, this is a negative part. If we take that is a 0 line, this is above is positive, below is negative. Follow. So, 
it is plus and minus. Now, what is happening? Uh, shear force is changing up to certain x, uh, a certain point it is uniform, then it is changing going to the negative side, then again it is remaining constant at negative. So, at this level I should introduce the concept of sign convention. Now, if I take shear force If we take a shear force like this, we can define this is positive. If we get shear force in that manner, it is negative. Here, shear force and bending moment, it is not a single force, a reaction is a single force, right. So, when there is a single force, we follow some vector direction, say it is in the positive direction of x, positive direction of y or positive direction of z. With that we define the plus or minus, but when it is a shear force, shear force is basically there are it is a system of two forces, it is a balanced system of force, bending moment there are two forces. So, it is it is trying to bend like this. So, this side there is a moment, this side there is a moment or shear force. So, there is a counter force. So, if it is one of the force is along the positive direction of x, other thing will be negative direction of x. So, it, it normally it is not defined according to the direction of vector, it is defined in terms of the type of deformation of the structure. Now, here this is upward, this is downward, but as a whole this sense is defined as positive or this sense is defined as negative. Similarly, if we talk about moment, this is clockwise, this is anti clockwise. So, we will not define in terms of clockwise, anti clockwise. If it bends like that, if the bending phenomena is like that, we say it is positive, and if it bends like this, we say it is negative. Not necessarily this positive, this is negative, this is, uh, this is positive, this is negative, it is a very universal thing. In some cases, in some books, you may find it is positive, it is negative. Some cases it is positive, the way I have written it is positive, it is negative. But whatever sign you will follow, you have to follow consistently throughout the problem. Any problem if you handle with this type of sign convention, you will follow up to the end of that problem. Next problem you can change your sign convention, but in between if you change, it will be total mix up. Now, bending form we say it is uh, sometimes that is defined as sagging type of moment. If the member is uh, horizontal, if the loading is vertical, gravity is downward, if the tendency is like that, so we say it is a sagging one. But if it is a horizontal plane, there is no gravity, uh, we cannot define it as sagging, I think, in a very general case. But anyway, in a particular case, we can say it is a sagging moment that is a hogging moment. So, plus and minus and shear this is plus, this is minus. Now, this type of say here uh, up to from the left end to the application of the load if you cut any section, say if you cut here and remove the left part, so this reaction R A, it will be acting on the upward side. 
or this left part if you take separately you will find to balance that load that load will be acting downward. So, anywhere if you cut, so there will be upward and downward forces. Now, when you will split the right side face it is downward and left side face it is upward or I can draw say this part little bit I can put it in a bigger manner. So, this is your R A if you cut here. So, this part it will try to give one balancing force. So, as a reaction it will get some opposite force here again if we cut then there will be a force and if we continue it will be like this. So, if we combine so it is just like electric plus minus charge are key. So, there are free one elect negative charge one positive charge if we combine they will be balanced. So, there is no external force there, but internally it is there actually. It is just like fluid pressure some disturbance is there inside it will be transmitted through interaction between the particles. So, this is the force. So, if you cut here only one force if you think that face it will be upward. So, in that process if you take a small element so it is more or less like this. So, that type of phenomena we say is a positive type of shear force if it is opposite if you if you come from the right side it is opposite phenomena. Okay. So, though all both the reactions are upward R A and R B, but this side shear force is negative if we take shear force on the left side is positive right. Now, with that idea we can take a beam problem with some loading having some support condition that support we can remove with some uh, appropriate support reaction. We can apply the equation of statics get the support reaction once that will be known it will be a member with some loading. So, from one end we can go on adding the load. So, summation of the vertical forces will give the shear force. So, this is a member some loading are there. So, at this station is from this end if you go on adding the forces here. So, summation of all the forces will be the shear force here and incidentally if you calculate from this side and that side it should be equal because whole object is in equilibrium. So, if you cut here the entire force and entire force this side this would balance each other. So, you can proceed from this side or you can proceed from that side both the cases you are supposed to get the same shear forces. Normally, uh, we try to uh, adapt one procedure if we want to calculate shear force here we will see which end is nearer actually. So, our calculation will be little easier actually less number of forces we have to count. So, we can calculate shear force similarly bending moment is uh, we have to take moment of all the forces acting on one side about that section that is the bending moment. So, if you count from left end if you count from the right end you will get the same bending moment. So, this way it may be clockwise, clockwise this end it will be anti clockwise, but clockwise anti clockwise they, they will give a sagging type of moment. So, it will be positive or it will give a hogging type of moment it will be negative. So, that is the basic idea for finding out bending moment shear force at any station within a beam, but you have to start with finding out the reaction then you have to proceed inside for getting the expression for the bending moment shear force then drawing of the bending moment diagram. Once you will draw the bending moment and shear force diagram from the diagram itself here say uh, your R A normally it will be more because E is less than B. So, this reaction should be more actually. So, it is nearer to this support. So, this side shear force will be more compared to shear force this side naturally the shear stress produced by the shear force here that will be more here compared to that. The bending moment we got some diagram from there you can get the maximum bending moment at some point. If we take a very complex problem your bending moment 
somewhere you may get positive, somewhere you may get negative. Among the positive part, there will be a maximum value. Within the negative part, you will get some maximum value or minimum value, whatever you can say. So, those stations will be the most severe stations. So, we have to investigate the stresses there, what will be the bending stress generated due to that bending moment or whatever the shear stress generated due to the shear force and that will be our guideline for the design or you will get the idea your stress should be within certain limit that is your allowable stress. If that is there your safety will be assured otherwise you have to change your design, you have to strengthen your structure or basically you have to make some alternative measure so that your structure will be within your safe region that is the basic purpose. So, what should be our next job? Next job will be once bending moment shear force uh, we can find out we can go for finding out the bending stress and shear stress calculation right. Now, I am drawing only a part of the beam, say some moments are here, some moments are here, say this is the M, M, it is a typical station and that is one of the maximum bending moment. Now, when moment will be acting on that, uh, it will generate some stress and those stresses we say bending stresses because bending moment these are moments and that moment is generating bending we say it is bending moment and that bending moment will generate some stress we will say it is bending stress and which way it will generate bending stress. So, bending stress its distribution is something like this. So, if we go from the center line little away our bending stress value will increase and it will be maximum at the extreme fibers at the top it will be maximum at the bottom it will be maximum. Maximum means one side it will be tensile and other side it will be compressive and in between there will be whichever that part we say it is the neutral line or neutral axis. So, neutral axis there will be no stress, there will be no strain, it will be under neutral condition. So, we say it is a neutral axis. So, if you go beyond that, more you will be away from the neutral axis, more will be the stress. And, and the stress it varies a linear curve. So, it follows absolutely a linear path. So, here linearly it will increase. So, uh, extreme point, extreme stress, this side extreme point, ex extreme stress. And you can visualize which side will be the tensile stress because any member, if we apply moment or if we take our finger, apply moment. So, so this side will, will get stretch. Stretch means ten, tensile, tensile, tensile stress will be developed. So, this will be tensile side and this will be your compressive side. So, this side will try to compress. So, compressive stress will be generated, this side tensile stress will be generated. So, one will be tensile, another will be compressive. So, in between there will be a switch over smoothly from in a linear manner crossing the 0 point through neutral axis. Now, so here I have shown like this, I have shown like that. So, stress at any point it can be obtained with that relation sigma is your m y by i. Now, this diagram is taken from side of the beam. If we take a diagram uh, along this means if we take the cross section of that beam. So, it may be any arbitrary shape 
right. Say that is a neutral axis. Now, here say any point that distance we are defining as y. So, if y equal to 0, m y by i it will be 0. So, at neutral level it will be 0. If y is maximum at the extreme fiber, it will be maximum stress. Here also it will be it will be plus or minus if we define tensile as positive, compressive will be negative. Here also there is a sign convention, we can follow anything actually, either tensile positive or compressive positive, other thing will be negative. Now, m y by i is a uh, sigma or this is the bending stress here. Now, what is i? i is the moment of inertia of the section about the neutral axis. So, i is moment of inertia or sometimes we say it is second moment of area, right. So, about neutral axis if we calculate moment of inertia of the cross section or sometimes we say it is second moment of area. So, that will be i. So, that will give m is fixed for that station, i is fixed. So, it will just vary on, it will depend on y which is a variable quantity. So, y it is varying from 0 to some value, 0 to some value. So, accordingly our stress will change. So, we will get maximum stress. So, sigma top that will be m say this is C 1, this is C 2. So, it will be m C 1 by i and the bottom part will be m C 2 by i. I am not putting plus and minus here actually, only numerical value I am putting here. So, sigma top and sigma bottom will be m C 1 by i, m C 2 by i. Now, it will depend uh, which one is bigger, C 1 is bigger or C 2 is bigger based on that sigma t or sigma b it will be maximum. Again there is uh, another aspect, another requirement that one part it will be tensile, another part will be compressive. Uh, still normally uh, tensile compressive part uh, not much varying uh, unless the buckling part we consider that. But there are some material where compressive strength is different compared to tensile strength. So, might be uh, one of the component is small uh, sigma t or sigma b, but in that mode the capacity of the material may be less. So, whichever will be guiding that depends on that that nature of stress and its value both will be important. But this extreme fiber stresses are quite important. Now, at this moment let us introduce one term say this one, uh, this I m c 1 by i we can sometime write as m t equal to m i by c 1 or we can write m by z 1. Similarly, sigma b it will be m by say z 2. So, what is z 1? z 1 is nothing but your i by c 1. So, second moment of area divided by the distance of the extreme fiber from the neutral axis. So, that quantity we define as section modulus, right. So, it is called
So, if we think in terms of our design problem, uh, we will be mostly interested about the maximum stress. So, any section if it is not symmetrical, it will have two section, two values of section modulus. One will be based on C1, another will be based on C2. So, top one and bottom one. So, we will get Z1 and Z2. But if it is a symmetrical section, say if we take a rectangular section of one I section, so here it is absolutely symmetrical about the neutral axis. So, C1, C2 identical, it will have only one value of section modulus. Only nature is different, one will be tensile and compressive, but the stress evaluation part will be only one step, but if the section is different if we take a T section. So, it is not symmetrical about the neutral axis. So, top flange will be very near to the neutral axis, this part will be little away from that. So, as well this numerical value of the stress will be more here compared to the stress at the flange, but again it may be dependent on the nature plus or minus section. Now, if we can get the bending moment, we can find out the bending stresses. Now, the next step is shear force. So, shear force will give some stress and that stress we say it is a shear stress. So, similarly m y by i there will be something for finding out the shear stresses. Now, if we take say this side is v, this side is v and some cross section here as well. So, this cross section may be looking like this. Now, this V will be responsible for generating the shear stresses. So, shear stress it can be calculated as V q by I B. Now, V is the shear force I already we have defined. So, B and Q these are the two terms. If we know we can get the shear stress at any point. Now, B is say at any level say here we want to find out the stresses. So, this is the B, B is the width of the section at that level. See here, this is the B, right. And Q, Q is basically the beyond that line, whatever area you will get. Uh, you have to find out the first moment of area of that about neutral, neutral axis. Right. Now, B is clear, Q is uh, say here we are interested, we can draw a line, we can get B. If it is a rectangular section all the time it will be B fixed. Now, Q is where we want. So, if we draw a line above that some portion we will get and that portion if we consider we have to take the first moment of area of that region about the neutral axis. So, what is that? Uh, that is basically area of that portion multiplied by the centroid of this shaded part say it may be here. So, from the neutral level whatever is the length that you have to multiply. So, Q part say I am trying to define with a rectangular 
matrix and it will be easier to calculate. So, it will give a better understanding I think. Say that is the new uh, let us draw in a little bigger manner. So, that will be the neutral axis. Now, here if we are interested, so we have to take a line. Now, this part we can define as say it is d by 2, it is d by 2, d is the depth of the beam and b is the width that is uniform throughout. Now, at this level we are interested to find out the stress. Now, this part we can take any say it is a y. So, this part will be d by 2 minus y. So, what will be the area of that? So, so b is the width t minus 2 minus y that will be the height and that multiplied by the centroid of the shaded part from the neutral axis here to here. Right. So, it will be y plus d by 2 minus y divided by 2. Right. It may be simplified just for our understanding we are writing all these terms. So, this part will give q and b here it is uniform. Now, we can follow that expression that tau equal to b q by i b, we can get the shear stress at any point. Now, oh, theoretically we can say we can calculate, uh, but we should have some idea which way it will vary, where it will be maximum. Bending stress it was clear that it was varying in a linear manner and it was maximum at the top and bottom also. and it was 0 at the mid level. Now, V for a section it is some constant value I B I will be a constant, but B it may change it for rectangular type of case it will be constant, but if we take a circular one B will be changing I think at the center it will be maximum gradually it will be less or if we take a triangular type of section it will vary in a linear manner d, b part plus q part is quite cumbersome this b d minus 2 in minus y there is one y here there is a y here there is a y. So, some so it is depending on y. Now, here this part is y and this part is y. So, if we multiply we will get some term it will be y square right say uh, we are taking this case only very simple case rectangular beam here in q b d minus y into uh, d by 2 minus y there is one y and this part we are getting y if we multiply we will get some constant term some term related to y some term related to y square. So, here if we put the expression of q in v q by i b will get one expression, their maximum power of y will get y square, then we can get y, then we can get some constant value. So, that will indicate our shear force will be not varying in a linear manner, I think. it will not be constant throughout. So, it will be constant then linear, then it will be quadratic means it will follow a parabolic manner, I think. so it will follow a second order curve I think. second order curve means it is a parabola. Now, 
here the maximum value will be interestingly at the centroid and it will be minimum and it will be 0 at the end. The reason is very simple because what is Q? Q is the first moment of area of this region actually. So, if you put y is equal to d by 2, so area will be 0, right. That shaded part will gradually reduce at the top it will be 0. So, q part will be 0. So, at the extreme fiber shear force will be 0 and if you come nearer to that so area will be more and your first moment of area will be also more and it will be maximum at the neutral level. Now, if we want to plot the shear force here, say this is the section, if we plot this, this side, so here it will be maximum and it will be like this, so it will follow a parabolic pattern having a maximum value at the neutral level and it will be 0 at the top and bottom. Now, if I really put the value of q here and uh, we will get the expression of tau and that will give the equation of this curve actually, but you can always put it and simplify, you will get the expression of this curve and you can plot it. So, so at this level I am not going to um, find out the final form of the expression anytime you can determine. Uh, but this value at the beginning uh, of your last class, we are talking about shear stresses. So, we have taken two plates connected by a rivet, trying to split by two forces. So, that force it was passed through shearing of that rivet. So, we told P divided by area was the shear force. But actual case it will not vary in a uniform manner actually. So, it will be starting from 0 here and it will diminish at 0 in between at the center it will be maximum and it will go in a parabolic manner. So, actual stress distribution will be little different, it will be little complex compared to the first side is just entire load, entire area we have divided. So, that area at that, that stress we got rather some average stress and here we will get the actual stress distribution. Okay. So, in that case if we calculate say B is the shear force and B into D for the rectangular case it is the area, we will get tau average and this tau average this value and if we actually plot the shear stress distribution definitely this tau average is throughout uniform that will be something like this. So, some part it will be less, some part it will be more, right. So, the maximum possible stress will get the neutral axis and this stress if we calculate it is tau max, it can be uh, verified that tau max can write here tau max equal to 1.5 times of the tau average value at least for the rectangular cross section. So, if you really put the value of q and simplify you will get the expression of tau and at y equal to 0 you will get the maximum stress tau max and if you calculate the average shear stress simply v by v d or by area. So, we will find 
that maximum shear stress that will be 50 percent more than the average shear stress. So, up to this we have the idea about uh, bending moment, shear force, bending stress, shear stresses, right. So, initial part more or less we have covered today. So, the next class we will take some further problems which are little advanced compared to this. Nineteen fifty one, a young nation aspiring to find ways to fulfill a dream lays the foundation of an institution that will give aspiring technocrats the license to fly high. The first Indian Institute of Technology is born at Kharagpur. Founded on the basis of the recommendations of the NR Sarkar Committee that was set up in 1945 to consider the development of higher technical institutions in India, the institute was first established in 5 Esplanade East, Kolkata, before it moved to Kharagpur in 1951. With Sir Gyan Chandra Ghosh as the first director and Dr. B.C. Roy as one of its founding guardians, the institute established itself as the symbol of a young, dynamic and resurgent nation. As top students rub shoulders with the most celebrated of professors and scholars, visions took shape. And IIT Kharagpur continued to play the pioneering role that was envisaged for it, enabling India to become a knowledge powerhouse that it is today. At every stage of its evolution, IIT Kharagpur remained ahead of its times. It provided the best of facilities for the budding technologists helping them shape their own as well as the nation's future. Indeed, today IIT Kharagpur has blossomed into a time-tested venerable institute of learning. With the rich experience of converting individuals into brilliant professionals through 50 glorious years. As you cross the campus gate, you feel the distinct nip that is IIT Kharagpur. The spirit of objective inquiry and lateral thinking hangs heavy in the air. The modern township-like campus of IIT Kharagpur set in sylvan surroundings is self-sufficient in all respects. From modern banks to the good old post office, from vast playgrounds and well-equipped gyms to modern auditoria and open-air theatres, and from the quiet fibre-optic-linked residential quarters for the faculty to the web-enabled hostel rooms for the students. At IIT Kharagpur, lush green bowers of tranquility coexist with smart cards and ATMs. Spread over 690 hectares of sprawling cyber habitat, 120 kilometers from Kolkata, 
IIT Kharagpur is one of the largest network campuses in Asia. Just the academic complexes itself spreads over a built-up area of about 2 million square feet, of which 150,000 square feet is the new complex that commemorates the Golden Jubilee celebrations. And that's not all. It is the only IIT to have conquered territory beyond its own through cutting-edge courses offered in its extension campuses at Kolkata and Bhubaneswar. IIT Kharagpur is not just about its large campus, but its diverse range of activities. It offers the widest spectrum of disciplines, ranging from aerospace, biotechnology, cryogenics, to architecture, mining and agricultural engineering, supported by strong faculties of sciences, humanities and management. There are more than 30 departments and centers that offer the largest number of undergraduate and postgraduate courses amongst the IITs. The courses are ever-evolving and show the way for other sister institutions. The richness in its diverse activities is showcased by the technological support the institution provides in areas like architecture, agriculture, post-harvest technology and medical sciences. The institute has revolutionized and popularized rice milling technology. The other major contributions of IIT Kharagpur have been in the critical fields of defense, railways, space research, power systems and petrochemicals. All these activities directly empower the human requirements of the nation. Advanced facilities at the institute make it possible to undertake cutting-edge research and service-sponsored research projects. The array of equipment ranges from aerodynamic testing laboratories to intelligent machining centers, atomic spectrometers, to VLSI design labs, molecular beam epitaxy, to anechoic chamber, fast protein liquid chromatographs, to liquid nitrogen plants. The cutting-edge technologies are at par with the best research facilities across the globe. In fact, the volume of research and development activities at the Institute is incredible. In terms of the number of patents it owns, the volume of industrial consultancy it provides and the revenue that it earns from all these make IIT Kharagpur a class apart and strengthens its position as the true pioneer in technological education in India. The Institute Library deserves a special mention. Fully web-enabled, it is one of the largest in Asia with over 324,000 volumes of material, including books, videos, microfilm and patent documents. that ensure a student's mind develops at the right pace. Along with its strong sense of academics, which is ensured by a strict selection process, life at Kharagpur is a celebration of, well, life. And at its heart are the students. 
In fact, the saying goes that you can take an IITN out of KGP, but not KGP out of an IITN. You've left a part of you behind. For most of the students, life in the campus was in itself a festivity, a collage of activities that shape their mind and body, a collage of events that was a synthesis of competition and cooperation, a collage of interests as diverse as dramatics and ham radio. Yes, life at Kharagpur has always been exciting. And the years cemented lifelong bonds as lives mingled over cups of joy and stretched over stimulating semesters. The halls with their blocks and wings connected by charming catwalks remain ensconced in their own world. A collage of memories. Infrastructurally adequate, architecturally meticulous, and holistically inspiring where students, wherever they might be from, invariably come into their own, developing their individual talents, honing their skills to take on challenges with confidence, so they can move ahead in fulfilling their dreams. What makes IIT Kharagpur so unique is its environment undiluted by the diversions of metropolitan surroundings the close-knit campus life enhances the entrepreneurial and innovative spirit of the achievers to be in an environment that is so stimulating it is only natural that down the years iit Kharagpur has consistently produced well-rounded individuals Many of them are celebrities in their own right. Holistic grooming has had a lot to do with this. So, no matter which walk of life they choose, the IIT KGPite stands tall. And so does the institution that bred him in majestic splendor. The alumni of this institute command global respect. Their distinguished presence at the helm of global giants is a matter of national pride. For the students of IIT Kharagpur, it is impossible to erase any scratch of memory about their alma mater. In fact, some come back to invest sentiment, pride, and money. To see the institute they call home rise to even greater heights, structurally, functionally, as well as holistically. Their singular aim is to make IIT Kharagpur an institute whichever way you look at it par excellence. A man's journey into quiet accomplishment and the Hall of Fame starts with the right step. And the training and placement cell of IIT has been the efficient facilitator in this regard for over 30,000 graduates. Having placed more than 95% of its students in a wide range of industries consistently for over two decades, it is no wonder that the Institute is the most preferred campus for technical recruitment of quality manpower. With infrastructure like industrial power and communication facilities, in addition to its excellent research and consultancy facilities, STEP or Science and Technology Entrepreneurs Park 
aims to assist the budding entrepreneur into a successful adventure capitalist, guiding him right from the concept, institutional financing, production, leading up to the launch and marketing of the product. With its rich pool of talent and excellent infrastructure, it is no surprise that through the last three decades, IIT Kharagpur has developed strong liaison with the industry. SRIC, or Sponsored Research and Industrial Consultancy Cell, was formalized as the Special Industry Interaction Cell in 1982 devoted full-time to handle industrial projects and consultancies and for deploying and propagating intellectual property. Successful sponsored research projects straddle a wide spectrum, ranging from computers, communication and biotechnology to robotics, photonics and food processing. The setting up of a state-of-the-art VLSI CAD laboratory and tie-ups with GE in areas ranging from vehicle structure design to electrical communication and software technologies are excellent examples of IIT Kharagpur's ever-evolving pioneering spirit. Collaborations with a host of national and industrial majors are a testimony of its proven expertise and research repertoire. Jubilee year, as the celebration continues, Pandit Nehru would surely have been a proud man today. For him, IIT Kharagpur was always more than just an institute of technology. In his own 